Hey guys, I'm Manoj. Welcome to the first chapter from the course C Sharp and .NET for beginners. This course has been designed in such a way that it would help you understand basics regardless of whether you have prior experience with programming. So if you do not have any programming experience, that is fine because this course will cover all the basics you need to know to become a programmer. If you have some experience with any other programming language, then this course would help you to gain more insights about C Sharp syntax and some basic concepts around .NET. This course is going to be divided into multiple small videos. I would call each video as a chapter. I would suggest you to like and subscribe the channel in case you have not done that yet, so that you get notified as soon as a new video is posted. Learning a new programming language or framework is generally a three-step process. First of all, I should understand when experts talk about it. Secondly, I should also be equipped with same vocabulary so that I can talk the same language. And third one, of course, I should be able to write the code using that programming language. In this course, every chapter will start with explaining few jargons, which will help us to cover first two points, understanding and talking the same language. Then the chapter will drill down further to explain the C-sharp syntax and technical concepts which will enable you to write the code. So, without further delay, let's dive into today's topic. So, today we are looking at most important concepts, runtime, SDK and IDEs. Let's start with IDE. It stands for Integrated Development Environment. It is a software which developers use to type the code. Ideally, you can also use any simple text editor for writing the code. You can type c -sharp code in, let's say, Notepad, the most basic text editor provided on Windows PC. But IDEs provide some additional features to boost developer productivity and that's why most of the developers prefer IDEs. Some famous IDEs used for .NET development are Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code and JetBrains Rider. This c -sharp code that you typed using IDE needs to be converted into a low-level code which the processor can understand. For that conversion, some tools are provided by .NET. The converted code is stored in a file which may have either .dll or .exe as an extension. A dll or an exe is also called an assembly. The .NET runtime can read these assemblies and execute the code. You can think of runtime as some kind of virtual box which has responsibility to run the .NET assemblies. If your machine doesn't have .NET runtime, then it will not be able to run .NET programs. So, an IDE is to write the code and runtime is to run the compiled code. Then what is SDK? SDK stands for Software Development Kit. It includes runtime as well as some other tools which help developers. To further understand these concepts, let's take an example. Let's say you want to develop a notepad-like application using C-sharp and .NET. So you will need to install an IDE and SDK on your development machine. Once your development is complete, you will somehow distribute your application to its end users. Those users do not need SDKs on their machine. They would just need to have a .NET runtime installed on their machine to use your notepad. I hope these three concepts are clear now and you should be able to use these three words IDEs, runtime and SDK in the conversations. Now let's quickly have a look at how to install runtime or SDK. For installing runtime or SDK, you can go to .NET website from your browser, literally dot.net. Once you reach there, it will show you a list of all .NET versions available. For every version, it will also show a download link for runtime installer and another link for SDK installer download. But we are not going to download runtime or SDK for now. Why? Because while installing IDEs, the installer will also install SDKs. SDKs also contain runtime. So if you want to set up a development machine, just installing an IDE is sufficient. As I mentioned earlier, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code and JetBrains Rider are some of the famous IDEs. You can use any one of these IDEs to get started. Let's have a look at how to install these IDEs. Visual Studio is the IDE provided by Microsoft. It has different editions. Enterprise Edition, which is a paid version. Professional Edition, which is also a paid version. And Community Edition, which is free for everyone. Installing any of these editions will involve same steps. 
let's check how to install community edition so now let's go to visual studio.microsoft.com and then select community edition to download the installer once the installer is downloaded we can start the installation the installer would show a workloads tab by default and there we can select the features that we want to enable in the ide the tab shows a lot of features and that's why it may be very confusing for beginners i would suggest to select asp.net and web development azure development node.js development and .net desktop development features from this tab you can also select other features like python development or let's say mobile app development if you need them this feature selection would decide which sdks visual studio should install optionally you can also select individual components and sdks on the second tab as you can see you can select various run times and sdks that you want to install you can choose to have multiple dotnet versions on your development machine on the next tab you can select the language packs this option is useful if you want to see the visual studio menus and options in any language apart from english i would just leave the default selection on the last tab you can select the installation directory it is the directory where the visual studio would be installed it also allows you to select the download location where all the selected installers would be downloaded in the process again i would leave these settings to the default near the install button it provides a drop down where you can set if you want to continue the installation and downloads in parallel this is the default selected item i would just leave it to the default and click on install the installation may take several minutes to complete i would suggest you to use visual studio community edition because of two reasons first of all it is free and secondly it would be easier to follow my instructions as i also use visual studio okay let's move on to the next option second option is visual studio code it is a cross platform lightweight and free id from microsoft navigate to visual studio.microsoft.com and then under visual studio code select the appropriate option alternatively you can go to code.visualstudio.com/download there are three options for windows user installer system installer and a zip package the user installer would install visual studio code only for current user while system installer would install visual studio code for the whole system this means all the user who log into the system can use visual studio code if system installer is used i am going to select system installer for download and once the installer download is complete you will just need to click through the wizard to start the installation once it is installed you can open visual studio code and then install omni sharp extension it would help you to run and debug the c sharp code okay let's move to the third option jetbrains rider is another popular ide sadly it is not a free tool you will need to purchase a license if you want to use it it provides a 30 day trial period so if you want to give it a try you can go to jetbrains.com/rider where you will see the download link then you can download it once the download is complete you can run the installer i personally feel that its installation is a bit easier than visual studio's installation you just need to click through the wizard and it would install it so now let's have a look at the next and the final option in the list if you are not yet ready to install any id on your machine then you can also use online tool to learn c sharp you can search for .net fiddle and then open this site it provides options to write a basic c sharp code you can also run the code there and check the output if you want it also provide options to add references to the nuget packages this may be useful to learn the c sharp syntax but i would strongly recommend to download visual studio ide to follow this tutorial also if you use an ide you can learn some more things like how to navigate through the code and how to organize the code etc all these things you cannot really learn with dotnet fiddle so that's it these are the four options that i wanted to present you can use any of them to get started with c sharp and dotnet again if you use visual studio 
it would be easier to follow the instruction provided in this course. To summarize, we have discussed SDK, runtime, and IDEs in this chapter, and we also have seen how to install them. That concludes our first chapter. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you find this helpful. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Your likes and subscribes will provide me motivation to bring more chapters sooner. If you have any feedback or any suggestion, or if you want me to cover any specific area, please comment on this video. Alright guys, see you in the next chapter of this course. Namaste.